Well, here we are again live. Let me just check the volume. Okay, good. Looking good. Waiting for some folks. Oh, here comes somebody. Number one. Hello. Praise God. Looks like the chokuses. I see pictures popping at the top. Uh, the comments will appear here. Okay. Amen. Well, since Brother Rich, you are the first one on, give me a thumbs up on the sound. Do a sound check. Howdy, Sister Lori. How do we sound? We sound okay? Make sure that you can hear me okay, see me okay. Amen. Good evening, Sister Laura. All right, here come the thumbs up. Good. Good. Amen. Amen and amen. Good evening, Sister Tracy. How you doing? Amen. It was kind of having a little fun before. Yeah, thank you, Sister Lori. I was having a little fun before I hit the live button. I was making some faces in the phone. So <laughs> now you know my secret. <laughs> of course, no, it wasn't taped. So, yeah. Um, but uh, it was kind of fun just doing it. Sometimes you just got to have a, a little laugh at yourself. Amen. Hi, Sister Jessica. Nice to see you. Praise God. And folks are coming on. Great. Praise you, Jesus. Amen and amen. What a beautiful day God has given us today. Um, it's kind of funny. It's like a, I guess it's, it is April. So, well, yeah, today's the last day of April, right? Oh, Good. Brother Rich says three thumbs up. That's like uh, great. So coming from him, he's the master of sound in our church for many, many years. He's done a fantastic job. Still helps us out too. When you know, we he's like the master that we go to, and uh, he always helps the sound department out when they need a hand. Sister Danica, nice to see you on. Good evening. Hey, Brother Carl and Emily and Mary, God bless you. Sister Gloria Levine. Hi, Sister Gloria. Nice to see you on tonight. Amen. Yeah, um, so is I think tomorrow is May 1st, is that, or is it today? No, it's today, that's right. Uh, Reverend Bosco mentioned that today was the first day of May. All right, well, it was a pretty nice spring day, wasn't it? Uh, cool in the morning, warmer in the afternoon, and... Uh, probably get a little cooler tonight, but not bad. Yes, it is May 1st. Hi, Sister Michelle. Nice to see you. Michelle Morales. Sister Thais, nice to see you. Good evening. God bless you. So glad that you could make it on tonight. Amen. Amen. Just give another couple of minutes for folks to get on. And... Um, I know we have our ladies' meeting in the church auditorium, and we have our men's meeting over here at the Olive Tree. And uh, But you folks that uh, watch from Facebook, so good to see you tonight. Amen. So we'll just give it another minute. And um, just uh, thinking tonight, looking over the message uh, for tonight, and just a simple, simple reminder, really, uh, you know, God's Word uh, is to be taught as instruction, and it's also to be taught uh, repetitiously so that, you know, we can get it into our heart and our spirit. Um, that's why it's good to meditate on the Word of God, you know, and really get it into your heart. That's important because that's what what causes you to change. I remember an article... And I'm, I'm trying to get better at this. You know, I, I, I tell myself, you got to write down these guys when you read these things or ladies when they write stuff so you can give them credit. But it was a Christian psychologist. And he wrote that um, when you study the word of God and you meditate on it and you think about it, get it into your heart, you actually become part of what the word of God is. You actually become like like God, like Jesus. You know, and that's the goal, isn't it? To think like him and to act like him, to walk like him. You are your own individual, you know, but he's there to help us. And like we heard about the comforter last Sunday, 
morning that uh, Jesus did not leave us comfortless, but he gave us the Holy Spirit to help us and to guide us and to illuminate our life, you know. But we're individuals. We, we are people, God's people. Every one of us is different. Every one of us has gifts and talents that we can use for God's kingdom to help people. And we ought to. We ought to do our best uh, to do that. So um, just thinking about some of the good things uh, that God has given to us and what we need to share with others. And uh, there was a good message this morning about being yourself, you know, and not trying to be somebody else. Um, just be what God made you. Some of us are funny. Some of us are quirky. Um, we, some of us bring joy to people, make them laugh. That's a, that's a gift. That's a gift to make people laugh especially in the day we live in when there's so much uncertainty and tension in the world. Amen. It's good to have joy. Praise God. Well, before we begin, I just want to thank everybody that's on so far, and uh, thank you for your giving uh, to the church and keeping the church going. And uh, in case there's someone on here tonight for the first time, uh, there's many ways, different ways you can give if you'd like to. Uh, one way is to uh, mail your offering to FGIC uh, or FGI Church, P.O. Box 4017, Manchester, Connecticut, 06045. Also, you could go to our church website at fgichurch.org and uh, hit the Donate Now button or, or Give Now button, and uh, they'll, it's easy to fill out there. Or you can even put a, an app on your phone called Easy Tithe. And all you have to do is look up our church, FGI Church, and it'll come up. Praise God. Hi, Sister Joanne from Rhode Island. Hi, Sister Carol uh, Barkasy, Sister Yolanda. Amen. Praise God. Nice to see you ladies coming on. Amen. Praise God. So God is good. And uh, I think we'll just give it one more. One more minute, and uh, some folks are coming on. So, um, before we begin, so the, anyways, uh, just a, a great message this morning to to keep that in your heart and meditate on. And like I said earlier, um, we we want the mind of God in the day we live in, and to get the mind of God is to get into His Word. Because if you can study the Word of God, especially in the New Testament, I know there's a lot of good things in the Old Testament. I love the Old Testament. Um, but the Old Testament, some of the settings was for that day, you know, uh, God dealing with Israel and, and the nations that were around Israel, trying to get a government of justice established in the earth and where Israel could go and, and win people. But, but we know the struggles that they had because they were under the law and um, eventually they could not live the law anymore. It just didn't work because of the flesh. But God did not leave us abandoned. He already had a backup plan to send his son, hallelujah, who, who came to fulfill the law by grace. And by grace now we are saved, not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, and that's awesome. Amen. So tonight, let's get into his word. Praise God. And uh, if I was going to give this message a title, uh, I would call it the treasure of your heart. The treasure of your heart. So let's have a word of prayer together. Lord Jesus, we just thank you tonight for another time to be with you and to be with your people. And maybe someone is watching that didn't post tonight, but they're watching. Lord, touch their hearts tonight with your word. Let it get deep into their heart, Lord. That's what we're going to talk about, the heart or our soul. We can, we can compare the two together because it is the center of our being. It's who we are. But we just thank you for that. And uh, just let your word go and, and encourage your people and strengthen them tonight and lift them up. In your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. So, the treasure of your heart, or let's call it your soul. The heart and the soul intermingle in the Bible because it is the center of your being. It's the real you, your, let's say your personality. You know, we have a mind. Our mind is part of that personality. 
and we, we have the physical brain that controls the nervous system and things of our body. We have our natural body. We also have a spiritual mind, a spiritual heart. It, Paul called it the inner man, the, the uh, spiritual man. Then we have a carnal man. That's the flesh. And these two kind of war against each other. There's a constant struggle for control. <laughs> As some of you already know, that uh, in your in your walk with God, you, you've had some struggles, you've had some challenges to overcome certain things in your life. Yes, we were saved from sin and, and freed from the, uh, the bondage of sin, was broken when we accepted Christ. See, we, don't, we no longer have to sin now. He's given us the power not to sin. But then there's things in our character, there's things in our personality that may have been put there through the years when we were younger or whatever, and we need to let them uh, come out where God can help us with that too and mold us into the person we were supposed to be from the beginning. And I love that because God's not going to make you any different than what he originally planned you to be. Amen? So my first scripture tonight is in Proverbs 4.23 from the Old Testament, but it's from the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom, a lot of people call it. But it says this, it says, keep thy heart with all diligence. Keep your heart, your center, your soul, with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So this is important to keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Then in, in the New Testament, I want to bring it up to 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 12, where Paul tells Timothy a very important instruction. He says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I'm going to repeat that again. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. I love that. Now see, we as Christians today, we're living in a day where we have to be more on guard than ever before to keep that holy salvation that was once given to us new and alive. We need to keep it pure and safe in all its passion and glory as when we first received it. If you can think back when you were first saved, how excited you were, how vibrant you were, because you, you, you found yourself, you found God, your creator. You, you were um, brought together, your hearts were brought together, and it created such a joy in your heart and a peace and the love of God was shed abroad in your heart by that Holy Spirit that you received. See, the born-again experience is a fantastic experience. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again, Nicodemus. You must be born of water and of spirit. And Nicodemus said, well, how can I be born when I'm old? You know, can I go a second time into my mother's womb? He said, no, no, no. You're thinking of this too earthly, too worldly. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you must be born again. Thank you, Brother Andy. Nice to see you on tonight. Uh, it is an amazing experience. Hi, Sister Carmen from Florida. So our Florida crew is on tonight. Great. Yes, it's an amazing experience because your inner man comes to life. See, think about it. Born again. We were born the first time in the flesh from my mother, my mother and father. They had a baby. They called him Sal, me. I, <laughs> I was born. But when I'm born again, I'm now born of my father in heaven. My father God, through the work of the spirit, my inner man comes to life or back to life, where it's born anew. See, look at the scriptures. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. When you look at these scriptures, you start to realize 
there was a rebirth, a re a, 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 a coming alive to God. Amen. So keeping Jesus as our first love is very important in the day we're living in. And how do we do that? Well, we do that by guarding what God has given us, protecting it. Amen. <laughs> Hi, Sister Diane. You said I'm here. I think you are here. God bless you. <laughs> you made it. Praise God. So keeping what we receive from God, guarding it and keeping it, is part of the total victory of fighting the good fight of faith. You know, when you gain ground in a battle, the next step is to keep that ground. When you overcome something in your life, the next step is to ensure and assure yourself and strengthen yourself that you never go back to that again, that you can move forward from that thing that plagued you or troubled you. So many people um, are freed from things, but then through the wrong thinking or the wrong application, they end up going back. And then they get discouraged and they start to say to themselves, well, it doesn't seem like this is never going to change. But you have to fight the good fight of faith. You've got to lay hold on eternal life. Hi, Sister Joanne. God bless you. You've got to lay hold on eternal life. What does that mean? Well, when you lay hold on something, you don't let it go. Amen? You just don't let it go. If, if, you're, climbing a, if you're climbing a rock and you have a rope attached to you, a safety rope, and you hit that, uh, start climbing up the face of the rock using your little pick and your special shoes and, and your gloves and, 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 you know, your hands going into those crevices, but then all of a sudden you slip. Well, thank God you got that safety rope. And let me tell you something, you're going to hang on to that rope for dear life. You ain't letting go of that rope. <laughs> no way, Jose. And that's exactly what it means to lay hold of eternal life. Hang on to it every day. Make sure you revitalize that in your life every day. And how do I do that? Well, we, by prayer in the Holy Spirit, by praising and worship, by, by spending time with God, uh, feeling his presence in our life. Amen. So in, in Revelation chapter 3, verses 2 through 3, Jesus tells a, a church there how to hang on to what they have. He says, be watchful. So watch and guarding. When you guard something, you're watching, right? You're on guard duty. You watch. You look around. Make sure the enemy's not around. Strengthen and be watchful and strengthen the things that remain. For I have, he says to the church, I have not found your works perfect before God. But he said, remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard the gospel and hold fast unto it. There it is again. Hold fast. Don't let it go. And if needed to repent, that's okay. Sometimes we may have to repent to get back what's something that we had lost. It's okay. Find that place of, of prayer and repentance. And he says, if you, if you do not watch, if you do not watch, what's going to happen is my return will come like a thief in the night. You'll miss it because you're not watching for it. See, the world, they're not watching for the coming of Christ. They're so caught up in all the things of the world. And especially the United States is very, very uh, um, challenging because we have so much thrown at us here. And, and you know, the, the, the quest for fame and glory and money and there's so many things that our young people they're striving for but they're missing the the basics of life the peace of life the joy of life it's too much it's so much tension if you don't make it you know and and what happens if they fail if they're not careful they may not bounce back from that failure but see god with god you may you may stumble but you, but god will help you get back up you can get back up today if you have stumbled. You can get back on the right track, amen, with God, because he's there to help you. So guarding is watching. Jesus told us to watch and pray in Mark 13, 32 through 33. To keep our heart, 
with all diligence until the coming of Christ. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son. Not even the Son of God knows the day of, of, of his return. That day is reserved to the Father. Only the Father is going to say it's time. It's time for the coming of Christ, for the coming of my Son. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. Amen? Yes, praise God. I need thee every hour I need thee. Yes, and you're so right, Sister Carol. Daily endeavor to keep what we have and changing what we need with the help of the Holy Spirit. And remember this, okay? The change in the Holy Spirit, can you please base it on God's Word. Sometimes, we, we are not, if we're not careful, we're a little bit too hard on ourselves. And we cause this place of like we, we, we may have made a mistake or we're struggling in an area and we, and we look at it as a terrible failure in our life. We have to be careful with that, okay? I, I, I may get to a place where I have to work on some things. I may get to a place, uh, come to a place where I may have to uh, ask someone to forgive me or I have to kind of take a deep breath and curb the anger. You, you understand? You, we, we are human. We're human, and we're not we're not uh, saved from human nature. It's still in us, folks. As much as we want to deny that, we have to realize the truth that we're human, but we have a fleshly man, we have a carnal nature, but we also have the spiritual man. Our goal in as Christians is to allow the spiritual man to be predominant, to, to live every day in our life. Paul said it this way, the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Wow. He didn't waste any time. He hooked right up with Jesus. Amen. Smart man, Paul. A smart man. Amen. So listen to this in Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. I like this prayer here because if you study prayer in the Bible, and I, and I hope that you do, I hope, especially in the New Testament, Study prayer because there's different prayers throughout the New Testament. This one is watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. See, so we pray, Lord, I don't want to go there. I don't want to enter in. So when temptation comes, we need to pray right there and say, Lord, deliver me from this temptation. I don't want to go here. I don't want to give into it. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. But if we understand this, then we're going to pray when these things happen. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. From your heart is where all your decisions are made for your life. You will follow your heart. What is in your heart will also manifest outside of your heart. So if there's some parts of in your inner being that need help or you're struggling. Let's 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 focus in on an anger issue. You know, um, sometimes we we do get angry. I get angry, but I must be careful not to let the anger cloud my judgment to act as a Christian in that situation. That's very important because Jesus could have got angry too when they were taking him to the cross. Could have got very angry. And called all the angels of heaven to come and rescue him. And they would have with one word. But he, there was a purpose he had to fulfill. He curbed his anger. He, he, he allowed love to conquer his anger. He went to that cross in love. Not in discouragement. Not in despair. He went to that cross with love. For the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. Wow. Wow. So what was Jesus looking at when he was walking up that hill up to Golgotha? He was looking at the joy. What joy? The joy of all the people he was going to save. <laughs> Hallelujah. And let me, let, me, let me bring it home to us. Let me bring it home to us. If, can, can you overlook your little problems tonight and look that someone is looking at your life? 
and and someone might be depending on you to bring them the gospel. And can you see the joy of that person being saved? Doesn't that make your problem seem a little less? Amen. 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 It works. When you start thinking of others and trying to help others, it's amazing how you help yourself. Hey, Raphael, my friend, you're right. Holding back the tongue is the hardest thing. Oh, boy, you got it. You know, um, I'm glad you brought that up because the tongue, the Bible says, is our most unruly member of our body. And uh, it is bent on the course of hell. I mean, it is, it is tough to control. However, God said we can control it. We can speak good things. We can speak. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth but only that which edifies or, or builds up. Amen. I say, Oh, Sister Dorothea, great. I'm glad you're watching with a friend. I hope your friend is enjoying the message and getting something out of it. Amen. So I want to encourage you for the next few moments from the book of Proverbs to give you a couple of scriptures that we can use today. And the, the writer um, is, is uh, most people believe it's Solomon who wrote the book of Proverbs. And he's talking to his son and he says, My son, attend to my words and incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep my word in the middle of your heart. Keep my word in the middle of your heart. For they are life to those that find them. And listen to this, and health to even their flesh. God's word, if we put it, hide it in our heart, keep it in our heart, it's going to bring health to our flesh body too, to our body and spirit and spiritual man. Amen. You see, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth of perverse lips, Put far from thee. There it is, Brother Raphael. Perverse speaking, you know. Put it away far from you. Don't swear, right? When you get mad, don't swear. <laughs> don't, you know, don't, don't use those. <laughs> when we were kids, we would substitute the words with the fake swear words. Remember that? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to give anybody any ideas. But you don't have to swear and curse when you get angry and those things you you can if you just stop and and seal your lips it's in proverbs chapter 4 verses 20 through 27 sister ficky amen let your eyes look straight on i like this let your eyelids look straight before thee ponder the path of your feet think about it think about where you're going what you're doing let all thy ways be established in God. This is, this is powerful. When, when you go to an endeavor, your workplace, your, your hobby, whatever you do, let it be established within the realm of God. Because there is good things we can do. Uh, nature is beautiful. A walk in the woods near a lake. Vacation to get rest uh, in peace. We don't... We can enjoy the, the fullness of the earth. The, the earth belongs to God and the fullness thereof. We can enjoy the things God has given us without sin. That's why he just said, let it, your ways be established in him. Amen. Praise God. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left, but remove your feet from evil. Remove your feet from evil. Amen. The word keep, when it says keep your heart, it means to guard, watch, watch over. Watch over your inner heart, the center of your life. For out of this comes all the principles of life that you're going to live. It's going, all of this comes the decisions you're going to make out of your heart. There is a great wisdom here because where your heart is, that is where your treasure is also. So think about for a moment what you love, what you love to do, what you love to talk about, what you love. 
That's the treasure of your heart. Your heart is the treasure room for all your treasures. Amen. Amen. So what you hold valuable is what you will focus on. What you deem most important in your life is what you will do. We must keep our hearts with all diligence or in custody under the protection of God's word. So keep your eyes right on the word of God. Don't turn from the right from it. Don't turn from the left of it. But protect your heart because out of your heart comes all of life itself and eternal life forever. God looks at your heart. He's going to judge you by the actions that you decided to do through your heart. And it's not judgment as we think, you know, sin. Uh, I, I'm going to bring a series very soon. I've been praying about it. I want to bring a series online. Uh, that some I don't know if it's going to be a podcast or live like this uh, on my own time. But I really want to bring a series on the, the true nature of sin how sin came into the world and what really sin is, you know, because God can forgive us of every sin that we've ever committed. He already forgave us from the curse of sin by Jesus dying on the cross. He took upon himself the sins of the world. He already did it. He nailed them to the tree. The blood covered them all. Hallelujah. We can be free from sin. But what I'm talking about is, is the, the, the issues of our life, the decision-making processes, that we make sure we keep it focused, you see, on God. Yes, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Thank you, Sister Yolanda. And renew a right spirit within me. But you see, why did he pray that prayer? Because he had sinned. See, he had sinned. He had actually done a, kind of a bad sin. That's David's prayer. See, we got to be careful that we don't keep praying this prayer all the time, but we're not sinning anymore. <laughs> I mean, I know, and, and I say this carefully because I know some people are stuck on the thing that, you know, we're always, you know, we're sinners, we're sinners. Yes, we are. I am a sinner saved by grace. There's no doubt about it. Paul said, uh, God has saved me, uh, a sinner and I, of, of whom I'm chief. I was the chief sinner. We're all sinners, all have sinned because... Because Adam and Eve brought sin into the world. Any, everybody born after that, unfortunately, was born under the curse of sin. And it was predominant in the flesh. We needed a spiritual move of God to counteract that. And thank God when Jesus came, he gave us power over that. When he nailed them to the tree once and for all, became the sacrifice once and for all for sin. I don't have to sin anymore. I just don't. I can control my actions. I can stay away from evil. Listen to this. Listen to me very carefully. Yes, the pure in heart shall see God, okay? But Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. So we... We, through Jesus and the Holy Spirit, can purify our heart so we can see God, even though we still carry around the sinful nature in our flesh. This is the, this is the, the thing that really gets some people confused. You see, God's grace is a gift. It's a gift. It's not earned, you see. So when I, when I say judgment for sin... That's for sins that have not been repented of. That's for sins that people practice until the day that they die. Then, yes, there's a the wrath of God abides on sin and the children of disobedience that continue in that sin. That's the warning of the scriptures. God is not mocked. Whatever a man shall sow, that shall he also reap. But then he talks about how we can commit our heart to God and he will watch over against that day. Paul says, I've committed myself to him and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed to him against that day. See, as a Christian, we have that, that blessed promise 
that we're not going to be judged for sins up there. We're going to be given rewards. He says, behold, I come, he says, behold, I come quickly and I bring my rewards with me. Amen. The Christian is going to be rewarded for the things that he did. Yes, we have to give an account. I understand that. But if we walk with Jesus today, and we and this is why church attendance is so important, because if judgment begins at the house of God, where will the sinner and ungodly appear? And you notice there's an interesting phrase in that scripture. I wasn't going to go here, but I might as well, because I, it's been on my heart. And judgment begins at the house of God. So when we come to church, we hear God's word preached, right? We worship, we praise God, we enter into his presence. And then God's word comes. God's word cleanses us, washes us. We're washed by the water of the word. What God's word does is, is examine us so that we can fix what God's word says we need to fix. And that the judgment is right there, and we can fix it. That's why it says, if judgment begins at the house of God, where will the sinner and ungodly appear? Because they have no means to fix it. You understand? And you notice he said sinner and ungodly. Not, not, not both being ungodly. There's a distinction between sinners and ungodly people. And this is why we have to understand the nature of sin. I want to explain it this way. Before I was saved, I was in sin. I, you know, I did things. I, I lied. She did a couple times. You know, we all did, you know, or we stole something. We, we, we went after the pattern and after the simulation of the world. Some of us were in deeper problems than others, but it was all sin. But ungodliness, there's something a little more deeper about that. The ungodly always seems to talk about someone who knew God and then went back to the beggarly elements of the world and started practicing horrible things. Israel was called ungodly because they went to false idols after God had delivered them from Egypt. So there's a trend or, or, or like a system in the Bible that the ungodly, see, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. There it is again, distinction between these two things. So I have to understand that a sinner, and, and I say this remembering me as a sinner, I didn't understand what God did for me through Jesus. I went, I went to church, but the, they never spent time in the depth of what Jesus did. I didn't understand what sin was until I came to a church that preached the gospel and brought to revelation to light of Jesus Christ, God's grace and, and salvation to light. Jesus brought immortality back to light. Amen. He brought it back. Born again. Immortality. A, eternal life with him. You see, that's a sinner. But the ungodly are people that, that knew God. In Romans, he talks about, he says, when they knew him as God, they didn't worship him as God. But they started making statues and, and false images of God. But they knew him. And then they, they got away from, they backslid from God and created false religions. And Jude talks extensively about that. So I want you to use wisdom when you're dealing with people and the scriptures that sometimes we put on people, they don't understand. My prayer, uh, especially in the last five to six years has been, Lord, let me give them a word that they can they can hear, they can grasp, they can understand. Let your, the Holy Spirit use my mouth to bring your word, the simplistic gospel of Jesus Christ to the sinner. 
Yes, to, the, to those who know better, I'm going to speak differently. But to a sinner, I'm not going to get into the depths of all the things that the ungodly do because they don't understand it. They're lost in sin. We need to save them. And yes, sinners can do ungodly things, absolutely. Sinners can, can, can do horrible sins. But didn't we all didn't we all do things that we thought were horrible when we found God's love? I I when I read my Bible, and you help me, okay? You preach to me now. All right. It, Jesus, when he dealt with a sinner, it wasn't the same as when he dealt with the religious leaders who were supposed to lead people to God, but had forsaken God's law. Am I right? You notice the way Jesus talked to the Pharisees and the Sadducees? You notice how John the Baptist talked to them? He said to flee from, the, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come, vipers, generation of vipers. Those were tough words, but they that's the word they needed to hear because they had lost, they were leading people astray and telling them it was God. That was horrible. But then you look at Zacchaeus and you look at the woman at the well and you look at um, the lady with the issue of blood. And you look at the leper who came to Jesus and said, no, I believe it was the blind man who said, uh, if thou wilt, you can heal me. And Jesus said, I will. Look at the way he dealt with them. Zacchaeus, he went to Zacchaeus' house. The Bible does not record anything he said to him. Didn't quote him one scripture. And maybe he did. Maybe he talked to him about the word of God. I don't know. But what we find is Jesus sitting at his table having dinner, and all of a sudden Zacchaeus makes a confession. He says, Lord, I have wronged people. I've stolen money, and I'm going to give it back four times, fourfold. I'm going to restore everything I've stolen four times. And what did Jesus say to him? Jesus said, Zacchaeus, this day salvation has come to this house. See that? What were their Pharisees saying? Oh, look at him. He eats with sinners. He doesn't even wash his hands. I just want you to look at your Bible a little differently when you read the Jesus dealing. They brought him the lame and the halt and the maimed and demon-possessed people, and he healed them all. He healed them all. The gospel to sinners is healing and deliverance and love and grace. The gospel to those who are practicing evil, that, that want to pursue evil, is a whole different manifestation. Even God put in Romans that we are to obey the higher powers, he says. For God has given them authority to, to combat evil and to, to deal with evil. And he said they have a sword given to them by God, the sword of justice. Oh, yes, this, this I do believe, that God has raised up this kind of ministers. He called them ministers of justice that have a sword that are, are, are to dispel evil. You see, I try to explain to people the reason there's evil in the world is because men allow it. Men allow it. Not us, not the Christian. The Christian doesn't allow evil. The Christian loves God. The Christian is promoting peace. Love and joy, the Christian is trying to help people. The Christian is trying to lift people up. But there are other people out there that are evil people. They're, they are practicing evil. Can they be saved? Absolutely. But unless they repent, then they're, they're, gonna, they're going to always face what they're promoting. They will reap what they sow. So if you, if you want to know what the judgment is, Today, in the age we live in, the age of grace, it's reaping, sowing, and reaping is the judgment. What they do will have its way with them. If I sow kindness, I'm going to reap kindness. If I sow love, I'm going to reap love. If I sow anger, I'm going to reap anger. If I sow hatred, I'm going to reap hatred. But what conquers all sins? The love of God. Love covereth all sins. Love conquers all sins. Amen.
Praise God. Well, I'm looking at my time. It's running out here. Um, maybe next time we'll come, we'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, but I'm going to uh, let you go at this point, because if I get into it, we're going to be here a longer time. So um, I just wanted to share that with you tonight, to keep your heart. Stay in the love of God. Stay focused there. If someone wrongs you, don't retaliate. Pray for them. Pray for your enemies, Jesus said. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Pray for them. Why? Because if you pray for them, you're going to put the coals of fire upon their head. And that's that's not judgment, folks. I don't believe that for a minute. I believe those coals of fire is the coals from the altar of heaven so that they might get saved. God bless you, Brother Andy. Good night. We're going to have a word of prayer right now with everyone. So if you have a need... Would you put it on here? Um, and folks, just stay with me a couple more minutes so we can pray for those who put needs up here, all right? So let's end in the word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight for your word. Your word is forever settled in heaven. Help us, Lord, to understand who we are, how we can help sinners and the ungodly, how we can help anyone, Lord, even the worst possible person, can be saved if they will repent, if they will turn to you. Give us the right words at the right time. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Oh God, a word in due season is like a refreshing drink to those who are thirsty. Give us a good word, Lord, to give to people. Let us rely on the Holy Spirit, not our own personal things and and, and looking at them and casting judgments upon them. But how can I help that person? How can I show them the love of God? Lord, we just thank you for this. Your mighty name and Lord, the needs that may be posted here tonight. We ask you to touch each heart, touch each body that might be sick. Let your healing flow. The Bible says the word that was in our heart became health to our flesh. So let's keep that word alive in our hearts. And it will bring health to our body. We just thank you in your, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So God bless you. Thank you so much for listening tonight. And put these things into your heart and go out this week and, and bring the gospel to everybody you can that will listen to you. Amen. So God bless you, Brother Anthony. Have a good night. And we just thank uh, you for tuning in. Until next time, may God give you a blessed and wonderful week. Amen. God bless you.